In this video, I'm going to go through visually the dopping process for transferring a stone from one dop to the next. It's very similar when dopping up the stone in the first place, although it is trickier to go from one dop to the next and not have it get misaligned in any way. And as you can see here, I'm using a, an aluminum dop stick with a cone end and I'm using green wax, which has a relatively low melting temperature. And all I'm doing is building up a little bit of wax around the outside, as well as having some inside the cone in order to make a good contact with the stone, which is that purple amethyst in the DOP transfer mechanism. And so what you do is have the DOP stick in the transfer jig and there's a little peg that you line up. The two pegs of the two dop sticks line up with one another. And I'm going to get the wax hot on the dop stick side by making the dop stick itself hot because that helps the wax stick to the dop stick. The important thing is to get both the stone and the dop sticks hot because then the wax flows and creates a much better seal and stick to the uh, both the stone and the dop. You know, this is one way to do it. This is a wax-only method. Some people use only CA glue or cyanoacrylate or, you know, epoxy, two-part epoxy is pretty common. But with this method, I can go from start to finish on a single stone in one day. I don't have to wait a lot of those epoxies. You have to wait 24 hours for it to fully cure. And I just don't have that kind of patience or planning to wait that long to do a stone because it could take two days if you go from gluing the stone on the dop in the first place, then you wait a day and then you make the pavilion and then you have to transfer with glue and then you wait another day to do the crown. And now that the wax is nice and warm, I've brought it into contact with the stone and I'm going to keep pressure on the transfer jig in order to make sure it doesn't shift as I heat up the stone and the, the wax. And it's basically the, the dance of the dopping jig where I try to gently heat the wax and the stone together and make sure that the wax doesn't just drip off onto the flame. And the important thing is to get the wax flowing, which I'll show a picture of that here, but it means that the wax goes essentially concave instead of convex. You can see it's kind of rounded where it's touching the stone right now. Lost a little bit of wax there. And what I'm doing is trying to cheat here with a little bit of uh, X-Acto knife putting pressure on the wax near the stone to kind of force it down into it a little bit more. And then I'll go and heat that back up once it's a little more flush. And of course I'm doing this off screen. And since I paused, I have to kind of start over again and heat the dop stick because the aluminum transfer jig itself is a big heat sink, which is good in some cases and not good in others. In this case, it's sucking the heat from the dop stick so the wax doesn't stay warm as long. Other people may have other methods for using wax. This is what I found works for me in terms of getting the stones to stick. It took me a little bit of time. I had about six failures in a row before I had a little bit of success. And so far I'm, I think, four for four on my last four stones in terms of transferring, both in terms of big stones and small stones.
And if you're still watching this, you know, and you're not subscribed, why don't you subscribe, like the video, etc., etc. And right now, the amethyst is dopped to the bottom, to the, or the dop on the right, with just wax. And so I have to be careful that I don't heat that wax up too much because then the stone could trans, the stone could, you know, get misaligned or uh, get out of position slightly. And so I have to be very careful that I just heat the stone and the transfer dop and not the original dop. I was getting a little frustrated and a little nervous, and so I switched over and am getting a paper towel strip wet, and I'll wrap that around the amethyst and the dop that I don't want to move, just to make sure the stone doesn't melt and get out of position. And once again, keeping pressure on the dop there, just in case. And now that the wet paper towel is wrapped around the dop and the underlying wax, I'm able to get a little more aggressive in heating the stone. And it can take forever to get the initial heat just right, but all of a sudden you'll find that the wax just flows just instantaneously, seemingly. It'll go from nothing happening to all of a sudden it's just a runny, liquidy mess that you have to be careful of cleaning up and having it get down everywhere. Because I also don't want it to get too runny because then it will go over the girdle and that becomes an issue with when cutting down the crown to the appropriate girdle line, if the wax is over that line, then you won't be able to see what you're cutting down into. Now, it may look like there are a couple of rounded sides here, and there are, but there are a few areas where the wax has flowed, and I can say that this stone did turn out pretty nice. I didn't have any issues with the transfer. It didn't fall off the dop as I was cutting or polishing. So, you know, that's that's what it was. That's all that it took. And that was, you know, eight minutes, more or less, of doing that, which is still a long time in terms of how long it probably should take, a, you know, an expert or someone more experienced than I am. And now that we have the wax where we want it, and it's secure, we have to remove the old dop. And you have to make sure that you're removing the dop that you want to remove. If you're not careful, you can accidentally remove the dop that you just put on. But I have that side wrapped in wax, and I'm heating up an X-Acto knife to start cutting away some of the dop wax near the stone, and I gave up on that pretty quick where I'm just going to go and heat the dop stick itself, and that'll transfer the heat to the dop wax and loosen it. And then I'll be able to just kind of pry it off. And any wax that stays on the stone, like that stuff that's sticking up there, I'll be able to peel off with an X-Acto knife. And there's a little bit of, there was a little bit of green wax on there that I had to remove, so it didn't fume up my kitchen, but I'm going to heat the exacto blade and didn't really heat it up very well there, but I just hold it over the flame for a few seconds. It may smoke as I pull it away as there's a little bit of wax on there and then just slide it across the stone, trying not to slice my fingers open, although that exacto blade is a little uh, worn by now. But that's pretty much all there is to it. The stone is transferred. The wax just has to get cleaned up because you don't want a lot of wax on your crown as you cut because you're just gonna grind it away and too much wax in your laps, depending on the lap, can you know, ruin it or clog it up. 
and it won't do a good job of cutting and grinding in the future. So the more wax you remove at this stage, the easier the next stages of grinding and polishing will be. It's kind of surprising just how hard this wax is. It's basically shellac. And actually, if you're interested, the wax that I get was from Ron's Rock Shop from eBay. And I like his wax sticks, the dark green, because they are, I think, have a little more shellac in them, which holds up better to both heat and uh, they're a little harder, firmer. And just cleaning up the last little bits of the wax. And I would say, you know, if you have some wax that you have to cut into for, say, the girdle, if it's a little bit too wide on the stone that you're using, it actually feels sometimes like it takes longer to cut the wax away than it does to cut the stone, especially if you're using a soft stone like a sunstone. And so I think I'm done here. I've got the wax done. And oh, no, a little bit more. If you're interested in watching the rest of this video of the amethyst, that's another video on my channel. You can go watch it here. And there we go. The stone is done, ready to go. Took a few minutes, but that's all there is to it. Thanks for watching.